What's up guys, Tom Aspo here, just checking in. Uh, haven't been able to be at the sandbox, but uh, yeah, he's been recovering. Recovery time was a little bit uh, longer than I expected. I had uh, two hernias as well as when they removed my appendix. So he's been doing everything I can for recovery and all that speeding it up. But it's been right around six weeks now from surgery. So hopefully get back on the bike soon and see you guys out of uh, photo sandbox and be out there with the team. But uh, yeah, hopefully get back on the bike pretty soon. Get all this, I'm itching, and uh, yeah, it's ready to get back to work and get ready for next year. Yeah, so we started out with an amateur program uh, last year, and we just wanted to start helping a few kids and adults actually the first guy that we ever had on the amateur team was ben riddle who was a pro rider back in the 2000s um won five loretta's championships and he was helping train some of uh, some of the guys that we knew and came to one of our camps and was telling us his story and he was like man i really want to get back to loretta's and so um spoke with him and talked with darla uh, who's one of the other team owners and as my wife and we were like, man, we want to get Ben a bike. So we talked with him and said, hey, got you a Honda 450. Let's go uh, try to get to Loretta's. And he did that last year. And that was kind of the start of this whole thing. So uh, tell us a little bit about HBI Tax and what you do. So HBI Tax is a CPA firm. I'm a CPA, Certified Public Accountant. And man, I've been doing that for 26 years. So uh, we do pretty much taxes for like high net worth individuals, um, a lot of motocross guys, uh, people from other countries, a lot of foreign national tax. And so that's kind of the engine that makes HBI racing work. That's where the money comes from. For the majority of it to get into this project is through HBI tax. So have you been involved in motocross your whole life and do you ride yourself? Yeah, uh, rode back in the 80s. So started out at Dade City. Uh, Kenny Yoho, who runs the I4MX series, we used to kind of battle a little bit. He was way faster than me, but uh, remember riding at Dade City, had Ricky Carmichael come fly by me on a 65 when I was on an 80. Started out just riding some local stuff at Dade City and rode till I was probably, I think 16 or 17. Had to sell my bike to be able to get a car uh, and go to college. And then I took a 26 year break from riding motocross or even like thinking about motocross. So. All the guys like the Villa Potos, the James Stewarts, like, I mean, I didn't even know who they really were because I didn't didn't follow it for 26 years. And then when I turned 42, I bought a trail bike. There was like a little berm in my front yard and I started jumping it. And I was like, man, I want to get back to motocross. So bought a 2000 YZ125 and just started from there. Yeah, so when we were taking a look at going to Supercross last year, motor, actually outdoor motocross, um, Darla and I were trying to figure out like what can we do to help the motocross community even at the pro races. So we do ministry stuff at the I4MX series and local races. We do stuff for the kids on Saturday nights. We have a church service on Sunday. And then we weren't really sure um, what we could do to, to help out the community at the pro races. and first night we were there we ordered a bunch of tacos from a local mexican restaurant uh, fox raceway and had way way too much food and just started going around the pits and asking some of the drivers and mechanics that were next to us i think maybe aeo was parked next to us um, had their driver come over and eat and then we're like hey that's what we can do to give back to the community is start doing meals on every uh, Friday night at the pro motocross races. So we did that the entire season last year. Our goal is to have a, a top level motocross and supercross team. And of course, like this is our first year, we're just starting out. But I think the three probably top things to building a championship team in my mind, our number one atmosphere. So having a positive atmosphere where the guys feel comfortable, they're relaxed, they can go out and do their job on the track. And that's one reason why we were able to pick up Caden Braswell and Ty Masterpool during the season because they 
came by our pits and they're like, man, this is, this is where I wanna be. And so team atmosphere, I think is huge. I think the second thing would be, uh, well, second and third thing would be engine package and suspension package. So like starting out in motocross last year, we didn't have anything. We had 30 days to get ready to go to the season, threw an engine package together and suspension and just went racing. One thing that's been really cool going into Supercross is we've been able to start developing our engine package, uh, working with a few different companies, working with Williams Performance and JMX to build some really awesome 250 engines. Uh, Ty's gonna be using Pro Circuit this year for the 450 on Supercross and then uh, just working with some different suspension companies like Active Ride to get our guys dialed in. Uh, I think we got the full package this year. How much money would you say the team spent last year? Yeah, I, I started looking at that and um, it was very scary. So it's it was well over a million dollars. Um, we A lot of people don't realize we were actually helping out with Supercross last year through Future MX. So we had some investment in that with Aiden Shive and Cole Bradford and then of course the entire outdoor season you're building everything from scratch so like no bikes no rig no trailer so there's a lot of kind of upfront costs but i would say to do a full season i mean you're looking at pretty much a million dollars to run a full four to five person supercross and motocross team yeah uh, i would say that the culture we have here is really and this sounds really cliche but more like a family so, I mean, we all like each other, which is really nice. Uh, the mechanics, you know, Chris Alley, who's our team manager, um, you know, Joe Thomas, who's our driver this year. I mean, we all really enjoy being around each other and the riders. I mean, the riders, we have a great rapport with them. And I think the, the faith element bringing in uh, Chris, one thing that's really cool that he does for us every single race is he does a, a devotion. Um, has a prayer with the riders before we go out, just something short, maybe a minute or two. But the riders and their parents, I think having that before you go out on the track, it really keeps you grounded and helps them to know, hey, there's a purpose for why I'm out here doing this other than just riding fast. What's one of the most memorable moments in HBI Racing's history so far? I think the most memorable moment for me, honestly, was at Fox Raceway. So I can't speak for everybody else, but I think for me, walking up into the team manager's tower and seeing like Lars from Honda, Roger DeCoster standing up there in the team manager tower um, and feeling super out of place because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, that was the most memorable moment, I think, for me. But the other thing that was really cool is throughout the season, just, I guess, starting to feel more at home and that I have a place there when I'm in that tower. You know, when you have guys like Hardy and Caden and and then Ty Masterpool running in the top 10, you know, pulling hole shots. I mean, that that's pretty incredible for a team for a first year. So, yeah. It's a good feeling. So every team faces challenges. Can you share any significant challenge that HBI has encountered and how the team overcame it? I think challenges uh, for us were just being a new team uh, because you don't have the background of knowing like what it takes to run a pro motocross team so like i know how to work on dirt bikes myself i can do some mechanical stuff and i know how to ride sort of slow um but knowing like what the pro guys need is like a next level thing so that was the biggest challenge for me because when we were at the track and then we'd realize we don't have we may not have a part i mean there's some people don't know this but the last race of the season we thought we were going to run out of fuel because no one <laughs> was keeping tabs of how much fuel we had on the truck. So things like that, that we had to work through. Thankfully, we've got three or four months this year to get through that. But I'd say that's the biggest challenge is having everything there. And then you're, you're all over the country. So if you don't have a part, you're overnighting stuff to get to a hotel and that gets super expensive. But working those kinks out, we will not have that problem this year. Yeah, I'd say uh, facility is a big thing. So, you know, we're out here at Moto Sandbox in Florida. Um, that's This is a great facility for our 250 riders. Ty Masterpool is over at uh, his 956 facility in Paradise, Texas. We took a trip out there. That place is incredible as far as motocross track. So having a good training facility where you can ride year round is huge. And Texas and Florida are two states where you can do that. And then I think having the fitness side. So 
and and the on bike training. Shane McElrath, who's out here at Sandbox, has really stepped up and offered to help do some on the bike training with our guys. Um, Outlier, which is a, a fitness uh, program through Evan Nystrom. And then Corey Noonan uh, with 77 Fitness does a lot of stuff with our amateur folks. So the fitness side, off the bike, and then the on the bike training in a great facility, I think is really what's gonna set us apart from the other teams. I think in talking with some of the riders' parents and some of the riders, the biggest thing that I want to leave as far as a legacy is a team that number one cares for their riders and the families of the riders and the mechanics and then the second thing is you know we we're very ministry focused so showing people the love of God I want people to see that shining through us and then on top of that I think that we're a team that always did what we said we were going to do or at least made efforts to do that we always want to be up front with the parents and the riders and say hey this is what we can do for you guys um, I think that's a little bit unique in the industry sometimes. And so I think that would be the legacy we would want to leave. Yeah, we just really appreciate your support this past year. It's been incredible. Just the, all the messages we've received from the fans and the people who are supporting us monetarily, people that are supporting us through prayer. I mean, it's, that, that takes, that is a big part of what we do. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you're looking to sponsor the team. We've got some awesome opportunities through Canvas. So we're going to be running Canvas gear through all of our riders. They are really unique in being able to put whatever logo and company color scheme you want on the gear and customize it. And we've already got a few races sold and that will help us to cover our travel costs. So I appreciate just everything from the local people to all the people across the United States who are supporting us. Uh, keep it up. We got some exciting stuff going on for you this year, and I think we're going to really smack it out of the park.